summer 2020 one here we come <laughs> video tutorial with the engagement ring on as a fiance that's a whole other video I'm currently editing it as I'm shooting this video but today we're not talking about that even though I want to <laughs> I'm just kidding. today we are doing a no makeup makeup look and I'm super super amped to tell you guys officially more about the Mac studio radiance face and body radiant sheer foundation they are sponsoring today's video I'm a Mac ambassador if you guys saw one of my previous what I tried this week, I busted this one out and I said I wanted to wait to tell you more information, but I couldn't resist using it because um, I, I love this foundation. It has been a staple for so long. Back when I used to freelance, it was a go-to and then I would build on coverage um, when needed because it is such a sheer, blendable, like lo literally looks like your skin but better foundation. Um, and when I used to assist my friend, uh, Makeup by Brooke Hill on Instagram, this was her go-to in her kit. So then I stocked my kit with it as well. As the name says, you can use it on your body. So the legs, the arms, it's waterproof. Just an incredible formula. So still the same amazing formula that you know and love, but with new added shades and it got a little packaging upgrade as you guys can tell so it's now known as studio radiance face and body not just mac face and body and i really truly feel like my no makeup makeup game has gone from here to here over the years so i'm really excited to share this tutorial and we're gonna jump right into it i've had some matcha and i'm ready to go <laughs> i'm gonna start by prepping very lightly with just a bit of charlotte tilbury's magic cream light as well as the charlotte tilbury eye cream Last time I used Face and Body in my What I Tried This Week video, I mentioned I prepped a little heavily and then I felt very moisturized. And so I wanna use something a lot lighter this time around. Gotta use the ring finger. <laughs> I can't with myself. <laughs> face and Body is a water base. So if you have dry skin, it's gonna be very forgiving. It's gonna look so natural, even on the flakiest dry skin. This is why it was such a go-to when I would freelance because it looked good on any skin type, even if you're oily, it's just a matter of prepping properly and also setting afterwards to ensure that you're not too shiny by the end. But the foundation itself does have that water base, which makes it really, really great for all skin types. And then I'm also gonna add a little lip balm before proceeding, Clarins Moisture Replenishing Lip Balm. Still have a rubber band to hold my ring in place. It's a little, it fits perfectly, it just doesn't go over my knuckles if I were to go any smaller. So, because there's a solution for like adding like little like bumpers on the inside, I guess. But anyway, in case you guys are wondering what that is. All right, here's the tea on MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body. I find that the best way to apply it is with your fingertips because it almost, in a way, activates the formula. As you apply it with your fingertips and it starts to warm up, you feel it create sort of a thicker consistency, almost as if you can feel it adhering to your skin. Again, it's waterproof. It's not gonna go anywhere if you decide to hop in the pool this summer. I'm using the shade C3. I work it in in circular motions and you will literally feel it start to adhere to the skin and create this beautiful coverage that seriously, if you were to ask me which foundation, tinted moisturizer, CC cream looks the most skin-like, it's this one right here and I'll go section by section and add a little more where needed. Going in with just another layer to create a little more coverage and give the illusion of an even skin tone. And then I like to go in with a sponge and just clean up any sort of like fingerprints or streaks that I created when applying with my fingers. Tell me that doesn't look like my skin, but just better. It's undetectable on the skin. It's truly shocking. I absolutely love it. I cannot say enough good things. And then if I want a little additional coverage on blemishes, I will take something higher coverage. I'm gonna be using the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I have two shades here because when creating a no makeup makeup look, you don't necessarily want to highlight. It looks like makeup if you highlight the center of the face like you normally would with like a contour and highlight situation. So I'm using the shade 2WO and 3WO. 2WO looks really great underneath my eyes. I feel like it just kind of blends in with the rest of my skin. And 3WO, if I need to go a little darker, on my face versus my under eyes. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of 2WO underneath the eyes, the smallest amount, so just like a, like that. I call it the little crevice, the little pocket underneath your eye. See how that color isn't too bright, not too obvious. 
I'm gonna use this MAC 286S brush to start blending it out. And then if I need to further blend, I'm gonna use the sponge, but this allows me to kind of just work it into the area where I need it to be. Share it out some more. Maybe even a little right here if you have redness. You should get a little bit of redness right here too. And then I'm just gonna pat it in. And then 3WO on any little blemishes that I see on my skin, like right there. And for that, I'm gonna use a Kabuki brush, a MAC 170 to keep the coverage where I placed it. So just doing a little patting motion and then feathering around it. Right? You could even leave it here, honestly. But we're gonna take it a little further. Contouring is definitely an optional step. You don't need to do it. But if you wanna add, like if you still want some more definition to your cheekbones, want a little more structure, I would recommend a really, really, really light contouring cream. This is the Huda Beauty Tantor Contour and Bronzer Cream in the shade Fair. So this is gonna look more natural versus seeing streaks of contour. And what I like to do with this is just take my fingers and kind of just, I think the only area that I feel like really makes a difference is the cheeks. But again, you could add a little to the nose, to the forehead, just the smallest amount to create a shadow on the skin. Again, that structure definition. Is it trash day? I, I gotta stop filming on trash day. Why do I do this to myself? Same kabuki brush, just gonna buff it in. If you feel like adding bronzer makes it look like you have makeup on, then definitely skip this step. Just to further hype up this foundation, another reason why, this is just like from years of experience, guys. I've been doing makeup now since 2013, professionally, freelance, and then here on YouTube. Another reason why it was such a fan favorite with makeup artists and has been a favorite for so long is because it allows you to keep blending on top of it without disrupting the base. Some foundations do not like to be further moved around. Once you start adding other cream products on top of it, it starts to look cakey. This foundation just works with you. If you wanna add some more makeup on later, if you're wearing sunglasses, I'm pretty sure I used this foundation a while back on like a, it was like a festival makeup look. Makeup for sunglasses, I don't remember. If you get those sunglass marks on the sides of your nose and all you have on is Studio Radiance face and body, you can easily blend it out. It blends out like a dream. It doesn't start to cake up and look weird. You can just simply take your fingertip and blend it out. Just another reason why I love it. Okay, take notes on this next move. Very important to keep it looking like you're naturally glowing. You want a blush with a reddish tint to it because think about it. You don't glow coral. You don't glow peach. You don't glow anything other than red. When you're flushed, you turn red. So I like to use a red toned uh, blush for a little bit of color on the cheeks and the bridge of the nose. Uh, very popular on TikTok these days, I have seen. <laughs> Still can't get on that bandwagon, I'm trying, but I don't know, I don't know what it is. I'd rather do a YouTube video than a TikTok. <laughs> um, this is the Melt Cream Blush Light in Daydreamer. See that tone? I know it looks intimidating, but it looks really natural once blended out and it looks like you're naturally flushed. So I like to warm it up with my fingertips, pat onto the apples and then up and then right here as well. And then you can either take the kabuki brush or sponge. I'm gonna take a sponge and just start blending it out. Definitely don't wanna go too low, but if it goes a little high, and more in, it looks good because when you're running, when you're hot, when you're flushed, that is where you tend to get color on the face. Bridge the nose, you know when you're sunburnt. You wanna look like you've been out in the sun enjoying your vacation. That's the look we're going for, that's the vibe for 2021. <laughs> oh, you can also add a little bit of that contour if you want to the eyelids, if you want to define them a little more. I didn't, I'm leaving it pretty bare. See what I mean about the red tone, how it just looks like I was out in the sun all day, enjoying a beach day, cocktail by the pool. Yes. <laughs> Another completely optional step, this is the Freck Noir, the original faux freckle. This product is pretty cool. It took me a while to get the hang of it and actually get it to look natural. It reminds me of henna, the way it goes on the skin. It definitely does not go on like a pencil would or if you were using like a liner for this effect. And you can have fun with it, like don't take it too seriously. I have realized that it applies better with a little pencil brush versus this applicator. I'm gonna be using this MAC 219S. Um, and I think, I don't know what it is about it, it just makes it look more natural versus the applicator. I think because it gives you a little more 
variation. So I just kind of put it on like that. Bridge of the nose, high points of the cheeks. See how it looks a little crazy? And then take a kabuki brush. So that one I was using, the MAC 170. And just lightly pat. I don't know, it gives that effect of like, you know when you've been, again, when you've been in the sun and you get those new freckles that are sort of transparent, they're not fully like chocolatey freckles or beauty marks, that's the effect that you get from this product. I think it looks really cool. And then you can go back in with the actual applicator and add some more concentrated looking ones. Totally optional, you guys have to do this. If you already have freckles, more power to you. I've always loved freckles when I used to freelance. It's the best foundation if you have a ton of freckles and beauty marks because most foundations will cover them up and make them look a little ashy and make them look dull, but face and body still allows your beauty marks to show through. So if you have a ton of freckles and you want to show them off, definitely look into face and body as your foundation. I promise you, it looks so good. Gonna let that settle in. Honestly, I'm hardly even creasing, so I feel like I don't need to use that much powder, but I'm just gonna powder in a bit any area that's a little shiny. First, I'm gonna go in with the MAC Straight Out of the Shower Brow Gel. I love this brow gel. It gives the brow hairs a naturally glossy effect that makes it look like you just come straight out of the shower. <laughs> and I'm not gonna use any additional brow products. I'm just going to use this brow gel to get that feathered look to my brows and hold them in place. Just have them look more groomed. Something else to take note on. I noticed that whenever I used a normal mascara, like a black mascara on my lashes for a no makeup makeup look, it always looked unnatural to me, whereas lashes in their natural state look really soft. So what I find, what I found, oh my God, I cannot speak. Er, rewind. What I have found works best is a brown black mascara to maintain the softness of the lashes, but still make them a little more visible. I'm gonna be using the one that I typically use on my lower lashes, Voluminous Brown Black. And I'm only gonna apply it to the upper lashes, not the lower lashes. That's another thing to take note on. Anytime I've added mascara to the lower lashes, it looks like I'm wearing, I don't know, the lashes just don't look very natural to me. So we're only gonna apply a nice sweep of this mascara to the upper lashes and also fan them out towards the hairline. So I'm not trying to make it too heavy. Focusing also more so on the outer lashes. And if you need to further separate the lashes, and ensure that there's no clumps so that it looks natural. Take a little tool like this, like a little lash comb, and comb through the lashes to make them appear softer and more natural. I don't really need it, but just to make this look last a little longer and prevent creasing, I'm gonna use a tad bit of the Laura Mercier Translucent, and I'm going to add it underneath the eyes, laugh lines, or the forehead, anywhere where I get shiny and crease, basically. And I'm using a MAC 224S brush. Also around the nose. Around the mouth, I am gonna use a lip liner. Totally optional as well. I just don't have the biggest lips, so I like to add a little lip liner to make them look fuller. So powdering right here is gonna help it stay on. And then I'm just grabbing a MAC 128S brush. I love this brush. One side is synthetic, one side is natural. But I'm gonna use this to powder down the center of the forehead so I'm not too shiny. Look at that. Oh, it looks so good. I'm like so proud of myself right now. I was debating between Boldly Bare or Strip Down, also cork works, but look at the difference. See how pink that is? I want something that's more so going to add like a little bit of a contour. So I'm using Strip Down. I'm just gonna lightly outline my lips. Like don't press down too hard, just I'm gonna lightly feather around to add some more definition. And to have it not look like lip liner, I really fill in the outer corners and feather it in. And that's it for this look. Oh, I absolutely love this look. Expect me to wear this all summer long. MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body, 100% a staple, and I hope you guys go and check it out. Let me know, scaled from one to 10, is this a no makeup makeup look? I think it truly is, especially if you have been watching my channel for a while now, and you can compare it to some of my past no makeup makeup looks. This one, you know, we've come a long way, but we've come a long way together, so. Um, if you enjoyed it, again, as always, don't forget to give this video a like, share it, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out, guys. Why does Kyle gotta slam the door right as I'm ending this video? <laughs> the fiance. <laughs>